Hello, my creators. This is for the tweens and the youngs. Um, and you'll just take it at your own level. Um, this is our lesson two for the classes that we missed um, with the cancellation. So welcome. And here's what you'll need today. You've got a little square canvas and get some scissors and cut that off so the plastic's gone. You also have that nice watercolor paper that's thick. You can use that today. And then this is our sketchbook paper. If you were here, you would have your sketchbook, but instead I'm just giving you a single paper. Let's start with that one up there. And you need your Sharpie pencils. I like to grab a couple extra brushes. If you have a couple of different sizes, that one came with your watercolors. That's a pretty good one. If you need some bigger ones, grab some extras. You'll need a water, maybe two. I have one for my watercolors and one for my acrylics. You need your watercolors from the last lesson that was in the bag. And then you'll want these guys. I think it's easier if you just open them all real carefully so they don't spill and then they're kind of ready to go. So, a little review for a lot of you. Some of you are new to this. I actually like to do this lesson in class, but we're gonna do it this way. We're gonna talk about line. I always incorporate the elements in, of um, art and the principles of design. Today, we're gonna just do a review with line. We're gonna incorporate it into several different aspects and practicing patterns. That's repeating lines over and over again. And some of you are very versed on Zen tangles that um, repeating lines and kind of, it's almost like a meditation where you just start drawing lines and, and patterns over and over and they become some fantastic designs. So if you haven't done Zen tangling with me, we'll do more of it when you come back because it really is a fantastic exercise. My, my daughter has taken off with it and she's always said she doesn't do art, but she finds that it's a really good space for her to just start messing with the Zentangle when she's um, studying or stressed or whatever. So it's a real stress reliever for sure. As is any kind of creating, this the process of creating art is a very healing, calming, stress-free activity. So I always kind of want you aware of that kind of language so that when you are having those days or even when you're not and you just want something relaxing, to create is always a great place to be. So we're just gonna do some practicing on that big paper. That's just your sketchbook, kind of scrap paper. <clears throat> I'm just gonna start right in with my uh, Sharpie. And if you were here, we would be discussing this, but you're not, so I'm just gonna kind of be showing it. If you have access to an iPad or um, a computer or a phone or something that you want to look at Zentangle designs. It's pretty fun actually to watch some of the videos. You can really get deep into Zentangles go on and on and on. Ah, I had this album up and running. Uh, here's an example of one for those of you who are new with me. Lots of different kinds of patterns repeated in really intricate ways. And I, I love the dark and the light in that one. And if you if you type in the word Zen, Z-E-N, Tangle, T-A-N-G-L-E, and you look at like some videos of it, you could get lost for like 27 hours of just staring <laughs> at ways to make patterns because it just goes on and on and on. So I'm gonna move kind of quickly with this lesson so I don't bore you to death, but you can pause any time and take all the time that you want. So I will be working pretty basically, but I would love for you to get into it and go deeper and, and maybe pull up some of these images and study them and look at them and see how you can repeat some of the lines. There's some great videos that just show people kind of in fast motion creating these Zentangles and it's pretty mesmerizing and it's an activity. Even if you've been with me forever and you've heard me talk about it over and over again, it's always 
something you can come back to every day. In fact, the book that I read about this is Zentangle a Day, and it's for all of these healing purposes of, of Zentangling. So there's nothing wrong with repeating this idea a million times. It It's the process of it. It's not like you learn it and you're done and you never return to it. It's the process of repeating it and the process of doing it over and over again that is really beneficial. So um, let's just start with some basic lines and then you repeat them. So start with a straight line. Find a little corner and I'm just gonna repeat straight. If you were here, we'd be talking about it, but you're not. So I'm just showing you. You could take that and cross it and then fill in the checkerboard. Now we've got um, thick and thin lines and that those kind of patterns are really interesting for the eye to have some things that are solid and some things that are light. We could do a wavy line, a curvy line. If we repeat it, it becomes a pattern. How about just a just a simple wave up and down? And then you could add broken lines in the middle of those. Broken means my hand comes off the paper and back on. So those original wavies are con continuous, and now that I'm adding a dot, I'm Pressing and coming up, pressing and coming up. That's a broken line. So come up with a different broken line. Yours doesn't have to look like mine. I'm just, I'm just kind of uh, freehanding this, and you can do the same. But by doing a dash, a dot, a dash, a dot, a dash, a dot, those are broken lines, and you can repeat those zigzags. You could fill those in to be solid and thick and thin. You could take symbols and just repeat symbols. There's a little heart. Um, you could do triangles. You could do, the possibilities are endless. So I, you can pause this and you can pull it up and do a little research yourself or just come up with things just let your mind go with the repetition and creating different lines over and over again and so that that's maybe a 15 or 20 minute just kind of an exercise to kind of we talk about kind of warming up that artist's heart you open it up simply by creating simply by doing it and as soon as you start the ideas start coming and um you kind of get in that flow the artist flow so you can pause it for me, spend as much time as you want on that paper. And the next thing we're going to do is just kind of an extension of that, but this will take a little more time. And I'll just, I find it, I think it's easier to do it here. I'll pull, pull it in a little closer. Let's see my face really close, that's so lucky. <laughs> okay, I'm not used to this selfie stick thing, but here we are. A new way to make some patterns. This is just, again, practicing lines and patterns in an interesting way. This might take you three hours. It might take you 20 minutes. But if some, I've watched people get really into it and just like get so detailed and pull out their micro, the micron pens or the fine tip pens as well as the thicker Sharpies. You could add different colors if you wanted. I'm just gonna start with a circle. Doesn't have to be right in the middle. And then I'm going to make another circle. So again, this isn't, this is abstract. This isn't have to look like anything. We're just practicing lines, practicing repeating the patterns. Maybe this one will be a little bit bigger. And this one will be thinner. I'm going to keep going 
And if I hit the edge of the paper, I'm gonna pretend like it's not there. And I'm gonna just keep filling in, creating that cool negative space on the back. So after I have a pretty good design, now I'm gonna start with those patterns again, the lines, whatever lines you want, you're going to start filling in. So maybe you're just a basic straight line. Again, I'm gonna work pretty quickly through this lesson so that I don't bore you to death, but you can pause this at any time. You don't need to be listening to my voice the whole time and, and put it on pause and then give it all the time you want. That's the beauty of not being in a structured class and just doing it from a video is this is all about you and your timeline. And if you have access to looking up some of the patterns, it's pretty fun to try to repeat some of the things that people come up with. Again, just coming up with your own is always fantastic too. So I'm picking a ring and staying with the same design throughout that whole space. So lines repeated over and over again, create patterns. Maybe I'll put that broken dot. So I pick a ring and kind of then stick with the same design going all the way around. You can have one design here and then maybe a broken line in it. It doesn't have to be all the exact, you could have a couple of designs that work together to create the pattern. You do not have to do it anything like mine. You can come up with your own. And again, spend as much time as you want developing that just with the Sharpie and that's called a Zentangle, just a new way to Zentangle. And then I'm gonna pull out my watercolors. My water, obviously I need to dip it in the water. Okay, get the engine going. And I'll start filling it in. I have this lifted up and mine might start dripping, so I haven't figured out the best way to do the angled camera. We'll try it. Again, that watercolor, every time you change colors, you want to dip it in your water, swirl, 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 and then brush off the edge to make sure that you're Brush is clean before a new color. With the gratitude cards, we were doing washes where we put water down and we're not very controlled. This is working with the watercolor a little bit drier, which means we're not soaking the paper first with water. We're just letting it come off of our our brush and it's a little more controlled so that it doesn't drip around. Or you could do a wash over the whole thing. That would be okay too. I'm just making this up as I go. You're gonna pick your own colors and your own designs, but this is just a practice of lines and patterns and tangles. brush each time. You can leave some of the spaces white if you want. That's always a choice. I've seen people do this exercise and spent hours. I'm being very quick with you so you can have this recording, get an idea of what we're doing, and then kind of move along. So 
I'm not spending hours, but I've seen that happen. So if you want to turn this video off and give this all the time you want, get really detailed with those designs with the Sharpie. And I like the background painted. Anyway, I think you get the idea. I'm gonna try to start dripping. I'm being fast and sloppy. Yours is going to be so much better. Take pictures of them when you do them, if you will, and text them to me. I want to see what people are coming up with. It's, it's kind of lonely to just be doing it by myself and not being able to watch what you guys come up with. This is called a mandala. Mandala means you're using radial symmetry, so you're starting in the middle and it's like a mirror, but it's moving out in a circular direction. So it's entangling the patterns with radial symmetry. Symmetry means same. So I'm using the same patterns over and over again, in that radial symmetry. All right, some of these spots you might want to leave white. That would be okay too, if that's a choice. So I'm gonna stop there. There you go. There's my Zentangled Mandala, Mandala, that's a better word. Mandala, radial symmetry, practicing lines and patterns and symmetry. So pause it, take your time on that lesson. And then our next little guy is on this one. I am going to practice on my paper that I did my Zentangles. I'm gonna flip it to the back and do a couple practices. I'm gonna get a clean one so it doesn't show through, but it, it's just a practice for you. so. It really doesn't matter. But we want to come up with the design that we're going to do on here. And we're going to stay with the same, again, pause and do your activities as you want. And I'm rushing really quickly through this. Um, but this little canvas, we're going to paint really whatever you want. If you have your own idea, just go for it. But I was gonna keep going with this line and pattern and some of the repetitions of those with the Sharpie and then fill it in with the paint over it. So to get kind of playful, I thought um, we could do, I don't know, we could do it, we could do a chicken. And play with this before on this paper before you jump onto your canvas. You don't have to do this. This is just Jill coming up with some kind of some silly animals that could be filled in easily with like the, the Zentangle guys. All right, there's a basic design. 
And then you're going to be obviously abstract, but then start kind of freehanding again this idea of the Zentangles. Zigzag, and you can keep keep going and be as intricate as you want. So there's a rooster or a chicken idea. And keep, keep going, keep going with my tingles. There's an idea. I think an owl is pretty fun and a little bit simpler. If you are part of the tween class and if you want to jump on and kind of Google some different images, um, whether they're animals or whether they're abstract, whether they're some of those Zentangle uh, flowers or sunflowers, fish, I don't know, you come up with it. I'm being pretty playful in just kind of these animals. Um, but practice on the paper first and then move on to this guy, your little canvas. I'm gonna go right to the canvas and I'm gonna do an owl. So I'm gonna go and if you wanna follow along for an owl, you're welcome to do that. Again, I would practice it on another paper and then come on to this one <clears throat> and then Another circle around his eyes. There's his beak. In his eyes, I'm going to give him his eyelids. His eyes underneath that. And give him these eyebrows. And eyebrows sticking on top. And then some pointy ears. And a big fat body. Comes around like that. And the wings in there. And then I'll start zentangling. Again, you can take as much time as you want on this guy. I've talked about symbols, fill in those big puffy um, wings with some symbols. Those little teardrops. Do heart, you can do triangles. I'm trying to make him fluffy. Again, I'm being kind of fast on this. You don't have to be this fast. Just giving you the basics. And then I like to paint with the rag in my hand. With this paint, it's already pretty loose, so you don't want to add a lot of water. It's going to drip all over. So now we just get to have fun with these bright colors. Yeah. 
and I'm moving kind of fast, but take your time, be detailed, make it your masterpiece. Why not? I always think it's more finished if you get the background in there as well. I'm being so basic, you can be so more detailed. You can mix colors if you want. sure it's quiet in here when I'm just painting by myself with no fun kids around. Jeez Louise. All right, there's my guy. Then in 10 seconds, yours is gonna be so much better, so much more focused here. So take your time on him. But there you go, you get the basic idea. Canvases are always fun because you feel like you have a mini masterpiece. So working on lines, patterns, entangles, symmetry, paint, all the things. So there you go. That was our today. I miss you. I'll see you next week. And this is really close to my face. Uncomfortably close. <laughs> Back it up. Okay. I sure love my students and I will see you soon. Happy creating. And I hope you've had a great Thanksgiving break.